in this video lecture we are going to understand the biomass determination of endophytic fungi the question arises that why we have to study this topic simple answer is there by studying the biomass of endophytic fungi we can easily understand the physiology of endophytic fungi and this physiology will help us to study the research investigation or the uh, investigation of endophytic fungi within their chemology let's start with the introduction the fungal cell wall is a dynamic structure that are essential for cell viability morphogenesis and pathogenesis because it is made up from different chemicals such as chitin starch proteins and different carbohydrates these all constituents lead to the formation of thick walls and eventually the whole structure now here the cell wall is mainly made up from chitin starch proteins and different carbohydrates now due to that what is happening due to that cell wall is a dynamic structure now due to this dynamic nature it provides the cell viability morphogenesis and pathogenesis to the fungus and next point is during the incubation of the fungus mycelia on the substrate tertiary pressure was created by the mycelia on to the substrate and it easily will penetrate inside the inside which leads to the high biomass of the fungus now here see consider this is the substrate on which this fungus is growing now during the growth of fungi fungi what will the fungi do fungi will insert its mycelia inside this substrate and it will create its net like structure and due to that due to that what happens here the mycelia will grow as like anything as like in bunch that's what the totality the biomass of that fungi will increase the endophytic fungi is totally depends on the different factors that is nutritional factors such as carbon nit nitrogen and oxygen sources next point these all sources will be provided by the nature when they are growing in the environment while when they are growing in the lab that that time we have to provide all these factors through the medias biomass of fungal endophytes can be determined by different ways there are mainly two ways direct and indirect let's see what is direct way now in this method weight and dry weight of the endophytic fungi was determined in this first the tiny piece of the fungus were incubated in potted dextrose broth at 25 degrees celsius plus minus 2 degrees celsius on an orbitally shaker with 120 rpm for 15 days after incubation mycelia of the fungus were harvested by separating from the culture liquid by filtration through atman number 1 filter paper the mycelial pellet was frequently washed with distilled water and determined their weight growth further same mycelia were dried at 30 degrees celsius for overnight the weight and dry weight of the fungus was determined by using following formula here this formula weight divided by dry weight is equals to the in bracket weight of the filter plus mycelia bracket complete minus second bracket weight of the filter paper now how to determine the weight and dry weight of the endophytic fungi by direct method first we have to take the tiny pieces of the endophytic fungi and that we have to keep put in the or keep in the potted dextrose broth and that broth we have to incubate at 25 degrees celsius plus minus 2 on orbitally shaker with 125 rpm for an 15 days now after 15 days we have to harvest the mycelia of the fungus with the help of atman number 1 filtration paper now after uh, filtration we have to separate the mycelial pellet from the filtrate and that mycelial pellet we have to wash with the distilled water again and again after that the same mycelia were dried at 30 degrees celsius for overnight and then we can easily determine the weight and dry weight of the uh, fungus mycelia and that we have to determine by the help of following formula as the weight and dry weight of the fungi is equals to weight of the filter paper plus mycelia minus weight of the filter paper now these are the results now see we can see these figures now this figure is weight weight of the endophytic fungi and this is the dried one okay and this is the uh, table we have where we can easily observe the aspergillus nomius aspergillus nomius weight and dry weight of the this fungi now here filter paper weight is the same 75 uh, plus minus 75 and here we can see the weight weight of the endophytic fungi is uh, 2.88 plus minus 0.02 gram and the dry weight is around 0.26 means it is like 10% of the uh, weight weight of the endophytic fungi next is the indirect method now indirect method is mainly used for the glucosamine content determination now here what we have to do here we have to take 0.5 g of fermented sample and we have to take in you know, 500 ml conical flask where we have to add 2 2 ml of the sulfuric acid 
then this mixture we have to keep at 25 degrees Celsius for an 25 24 hours after that we have to dilute it with the help of distilled water to make one normal solution and after that we have to articulate it at 15 lb pressure for one hour after articulate we have to filter it through the Hotman number one filter paper to remove the sediments after this we have to add five normal NaOH solution to make 100 ml of with distilled water addition then we have to take one ml of sample and we have to add it in that N acetyl D glucosa amine and we have to take optical density at 530 nanometer and these values we have to put on a graph and this graph would be like uh, expressed like milligram of glucosamine per gram and the glucosamine content was measured for 30 days by taking 3 or 5 days gap during the incubation period you can see this graph now on this graph you can easily see the incubation period versus the glucosamine content milligram per this one and here we can easily observe the highest glucosamine content was the, on the 15 days of incubation period and the R scale value is a 0.9107 so this is all about the biomass determination of endophyte fungi which helps us to identify or to uh, reveal the physiology of endophyte fungi thank you